What's going on, guys? It is Silver Forever, and today we have an awesome idea. Here it is. I went ahead and used this tier maker service. I uploaded a bunch of silver bullion coins. There's 10 of them right here, and I'm gonna go ahead and rank them for you today. You can see which ones I think are good choices, which ones I think are bad choices, and then you can actually do this yourself. All you need is a Twitter account. If you're a content creator, you can go ahead and record your screen as you're doing this in presentation mode. Or if you're a viewer, you can do this yourself. Take a screenshot, find a way to share it with me in the comments below or just let me know do you agree do you disagree this is an open conversation and i want to know what you think about the way that i rank these silver bullion coins so without any further ado let's just go ahead and jump right into it i'm going to grab the american silver eagle here and figure out where i'm going to place it so for those of you who don't know the s tier is actually the greatest tier that there is it stands for super or superior superb a is a great tier of course and d is going to be the worst tier here now there's often f tiers in these tier ranking systems but the truth is that i don't agree because i don't think there's any silver that is f tier any silver is better than no silver and for my purposes i just went ahead and got rid of that f tier because i don't think there is such a thing in the world of silver so you're probably wondering where would I rank the American Silver Eagle? We have the type one here for all intents and purposes. I'm just going to treat the ASE type ones and type twos as equals. And in previous years, every channel was gonna tell you the American Silver Eagle is the way to go. The most popular bullion coin in the world. Everybody trusts it. Everybody knows what they are. And you can always expect to get your money back when you go to sell it at the LCS. But what I've noticed particularly over the last couple of years is that the premiums have just skyrocketed and although you are likely to make some of that premium back from an LCS buying back your coin it still doesn't quite cover the spread for the premium that you're actually buying it for in the first place and so for that reason and a few others I have decided not to put the American Silver Eagle in the S tier but to put it in the A tier. The Type 2 design is not really the best thing running right now. Their security feature is a single missing notch on the reeded edge. If you're looking at coins like the Britannia or like the Maple, they just have much more superior security features. And so for that reason, I'm going to not put the ASE in the S tier, but I will have it in the A tier. And so moving on, we're gonna go ahead and place the Kangaroo the Australian Perth Mint Kangaroo in the B tier. Now, why am I putting this in the B tier? The reason is that the premiums are pretty low. I generally like Perth Mint products a lot. There's one thing that really irks me about these products though, particularly the kangaroo, and that is that every kangaroo I have ever bought has milk spots and some of them are really really bad we're looking at the reverse here of course the obverse has the queen a lot of these have the queen i'm not the biggest fan personally of the queen obverses i'm not mad at the kangaroo design they have some pretty cool security features in there too depending on the year that might require a microscope you can look at some of the a's and you'll see smaller a's within them but the milk spotting is just what got me so between the decent premiums, the generally higher quality of the design and the security features, I think that it deserves a high rank, but it's not quite on the level of the American Silver Eagle and the milk spots have just really gotten to me. So I'm gonna leave that one in B tier. Next, we have the Austrian Philharmonic. And where is this gonna go? You're fooling yourself if you think I'm gonna put it in the S tier. That is not going in the S tier. I'm actually gonna drop this one in the C tier. There's some unique things about the Philharmonic. I do kind of like how they look in person. There are some milk spotting problems. One unique thing is that they don't have reeded edges like the other ones. So that's kind of interesting. I think that the obverse and the reverse are both pretty good designs and I generally like them. But for me, they're just they're just C tier. They're just not on the level of a Perth Mint product or of an American Silver Eagle. I don't hate them. I'm not putting them in the D tier, but they just don't really jump out to me. They just seem average, you know? So I'm gonna go ahead and give them an average C. 
So in case you've noticed that the screen's changed or my voice has changed, the audio has changed, I was filming this and somehow I managed to lose the tail end of the recording. So we are redoing it here. So without further ado, let us continue on to the next one. And for this one, we are going to be selecting the Chinese Panda. So the Chinese Silver Panda, for those of you who don't know, used to be a one troy ounce silver coin. Several years back, they decided to switch over to the metric system and so now the one ounce coin equivalent is actually only 30 grams as opposed to 31.1 grams which is a typical troy ounce but the chinese decided to move back to the metric system and so now the one troy ounce equivalent is actually only 30 grams but even though it's less silver in each coin they still command a really high premium and that's because there's high collectability in these chinese silver pandas because virtually every year they come out with a new design there's also a fairly large contingent of the population in China that actually enjoys collecting these coins, that gifts them to one another. Oftentimes you find them in slabs that are graded. And so for that reason, they're typically more expensive. And so when I think about silver bullion coins for the purpose of stacking, one thing that I do not like to do is spend too much when I'm buying bulk silver in terms of premium. And the few Chinese silver pandas that I've gotten range anywhere from like 25 to 40% premiums easily. And so for that reason, I'm going to go ahead and drop the Chinese silver panda in the C tier. It's not a terrible silver bullion coin, but in my opinion, it's not the best choice for for stacking. All right, so moving on, let's go ahead and talk about this one, the Somalian Silver Elephant. We're actually not talking about this coin in particular. We're just using this as a stand-in to represent silver bullion coins that are produced in all kinds of mints from all kinds of countries around the world. You know, I have coins from Rwanda. I have coins from the Congo. I have coins from Asian countries like Bhutan. You know, countries all around the world are able to produce their own silver bullion coins, but oftentimes they're not as highly recognized as the more popular coins. They often carry higher premiums, and sometimes there's even just pretty obvious quality issues depending on the country that you're purchasing these coins from and so you know for me it's fun to have maybe one example of a silver bullion coin from different countries around the world but i'm definitely not the guy who's going to be stacking these in bulk and i don't think it's the best option so if any of these coins are going to be d tier i'm going to have to drop this one in the d tier and remember there is no f tier in this case because i really truly believe that there is no really bad option if you're looking into getting silver but i do think there are many better options you know depending on the context there could be a best option so let me know what you think is the best option for 2021 and speaking of that i'm going to start talking about some of these other coins that i know you guys watching silver forever are aware i enjoy and so one of those such coins is the Canada Silver Maple Leaf. And so this coin, as many of you who have been around the game longer will know, used to have notorious milk spotting issues. But after around 2016, the Royal Canadian Mint started using what they're calling a mint shield technology. I've never seen any milk spots since. Add on top of that, this coin is just, in my opinion, a gorgeous coin. I love trees, I love leaves, and I think the design is really nice with the maple there. If you look at these in person, whether they're in silver or gold, it's really cool to see the veins and the leaves. But on top of that, you have these really thin radial lines in the background. You have a security feature in the small silver leaf micro engraved to the bottom right there above the ounce. And I just gotta say, I love this coin. In many cases, they will have premiums that are as low as any other silver bullion coin that you can snag and for that reason I have deemed it the best coin of 2021 it's the one that I'm kind of steady stacking throughout the year we are granting the Canada silver maple leaf the S tier status for superb bullion coin of 2021 let me know if you agree or disagree and let's go ahead and move on to the next one the South African 
Krugerrand. So the Krugerrand has this design. Interestingly, the Krugerrand has James Kruger on the obverse, whereas many of these coins, like the Royal Canadian Mint coins or the Perth Mint coins or the British coins from the Royal Mint have Queen Elizabeth on the obverse. So that's kind of something unique about the Krugerrand that I like. The Krugerrands also have a pretty low premium among the silver bullion coins, and I think that they're a really good choice for that reason. But at the same time, I've had milk spotting issues with them. I don't think that they necessarily deserve an A tier status like the American Silver Eagle. They don't have any unique security features on them, and so they're just kind of a solid option. Not the best, not the worst. And so I'm going to drop them in the B tier next to the Australian kangaroos. And moving on to the next one, we have the Britannia. Now, many of you who watch my videos will know I also have a very soft spot for the Britannia. And I honestly think that it's well-deserved. This is a great silver bullion coin. It looks really great in gold as well. Even the one-tenth gold pieces and the one-ounce gold pieces, both of those look great. I have a ton of silver Britannias. I actually just bought another lot of them, the 2022 Britannias. I really think that these are fantastic coins. I have a 10-ounce version of it. I've got the Brit Bar. They have absolutely incredible incredible security features, many of them. They have very small text in the inner ring around Lady Britannia. They have a really amazing security feature that alternates between a padlock and a trident. They have an amazing wavy background there. I just can't say enough good things about this coin. And I'm really tempted to put it into S tier status, but I have to say that I'm gonna drop it in the A tier. And that's just because of some milk spotting issues that I've had with the Royal Mint. I know that all kinds of dealers claim that they don't care about milk spots. It makes no difference. Well, I'm not buying it. The reality is my exit plan involves not a stressful, rushed visit to the LCS where I'm demanding as little cash as I can get right now. My exit plan, if I ever do decide to sell and not just pass it on and create generational wealth for my family, is to do private resale. And you're kidding yourself if you think that people don't care about milk spots. The only people who don't actually care about milk spots are people who are only using the silver for melt purposes or for industrial reasons. People who will just put their silver in their tube, be happy to accept a spot price. But, you know, there are LCSs out there who might use that as a justification to give you even less than spot because they know that it's going to be harder to turn around and sell that to a retail level consumer. And so while milk spotting doesn't take away from the inherent value of the silver in the coin itself. It does take away from the collectability of a coin, from the eye appeal of a coin. And for that reason, in 2021, where the silver maple leaf from Canada really stands out as the only type of bullion coin that I've had that doesn't have milk spots, I'm going to leave that one in the S tier and reserve the A tier for the Britannia and American Silver Eagle. The Wolverine coins. So this one is a stand-in for any of the Marvel coins or Star Wars coins or any of these cinematic universe coins that have been licensed to uh, small island nations like Niue or Tuvalu. These are highly collectible. People pay a high price for these things. They will get you a pretty penny, especially on the private resale market. You know, if, if you buy in on some of these sets early on and you get some coins that are highly designed that people are willing to pay a high premium for years after the fact so that they complete their sets. You can make a good chunk of change selling these things. But I don't know anything about comic book universes. I don't know which collector sets are going to be good or bad. What I do know is that they command a very high premium even out the gate and I just don't think that they make sense for stacking purposes. If you're a collector then that's great but we're talking about bullion here and you have to consider the fact that if you're paying a hundred percent premium for an item you're never going to see that back on the tail end if you're selling to somewhere like an LCS only in private resale. I just don't think they're a good option for me and I'm dropping them in the D. Which leads us to our very 
very last one, the Mexican Silver Libertad. For those of you who don't know, Libertads weren't always a huge thing. They weren't always an amazing collector item that can get you a lot of money on the private resale market. Certainly within the last year or two, Mexican Libertads have really blown up in popularity. I have some friends, for instance, who would obviously put them in the S tier. They just love these coins. And the truth is, I like the coin too. I like the old design. I like the new design. I have a few in my collection, but I'm not willing to pay an exorbitant rate for them. I just don't think that they deserve S tier status. Now, most people would go ahead and drop them in the A, and I considered dropping them in the A. I was almost convinced by a buddy of mine that they deserve to be in the A. But the truth is my instincts tell me to drop the Mexican Libertad in the B tier status. And I know some of you are going to be <gasps> shocked, absolutely shocked. How could you say that the Libertad is on par with the Australian Kangaroo from the Perth Mint or the South African Krugerrand? And the reason is because it costs a lot more nowadays in 2021. So yeah, sure, I might prefer the design of the Mexican Libertad, but we have to factor in how much these things cost. I I actually just watched one of Silver Seeker's video where he calls around to see what the buyback prices are on silver right now. And I was shocked to find that the majority of shops that he called essentially said that they would only pay spot for American Silver Eagles. It wasn't but five months ago that a bunch of these same shops were paying six, seven dollars over spot to buy back the American Silver Eagles. And so who knows, maybe this shouldn't even be an A tier anymore. I'm gonna go ahead and leave the Silver Eagle in the A tier though, because it is the most popular bullion coin in the world. It's recognized everywhere. And you know, here I am struggling to even find reasons to leave it in the A tier, but I'm not gonna switch it up. We'll do this again next year in 2022, see what's changed. But for now, I wanna know what you think. Am I totally off base here with the way that I've ranked these coins? Do you generally agree? Or and there's just like one that you think I'm way off on. Let me know in the comments down below. Regardless, hit that like button, check out the description, click on my link to the tier maker site where you can actually do this for yourself. But if you're actually a content creator, I welcome you to use my templates to do this same kind of video for yourself. Credit me, don't credit me, whatever. I really just wanna see a bunch more people in the community doing this so I can get a sense of where I am relative to other people. Because at the end of the day, you gotta stack for yourself. We all have our own opinions. We can learn from one another, but don't let anybody tell you that the way that you're stacking is wrong. Thanks for sticking around. I really value every one of you who has watched my videos and has hung around to the end. You guys are the real diehard stackers. Go ahead and hit that like button. We're not all about stacking silver here. We like to stack like buttons as well. And I just want to stack them high on this video. Hope you guys have a great day and I will see you next time. Silver forever, out.